Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at using icons in list items and what a lot of what I'm going to say here also applies to using icons generally for example as the background of a button or in, in a image button um, so at the moment I've got this application here and I've got these specially formatted list items and if I look at the XML that formats each item um, I've got a, a linear layout nested within a linear layout and um, this inner linear layout isn't any use at the moment um, but the reason I added it was because I want to add a, an image icon here that will have a, an icon on it so this one's a horizontal linear layout and this one's vertical and the inner one lays out these bits of text underneath each other and this outer one I want to lay out first an image icon and then the two bits of text horizontally. So um, if you uh, start um, Explorer on your system you'll find that you already have a useful source of free icon, icons on your computer and you can of course create icons uh, preferably as .png files if you want using any kind of image software like um, GIMP or Inkscape are two good um, free ones but if you go to, um, if you look for your Android SDK folder and uh, I, I installed my Android SDKs using Eclipse and if you install them yourself they're liable to end up in your C program files folder on Windows um, but uh, if you install via Eclipse and you're using Windows they seem to end up in C users and here's my username John whoops and uh, this Android hyphen SDKs folder and then once, once you find this folder wherever it is if you go to platforms and pick an Android platform and data uh, res resources and pick one of these drawable folders uh, for example not the language specific ones that just have like a little bit of um, stuff in them but one of the kind of drawable hyphen HDPI or LDPI or MDPI or the other one um, so let's look at drawable HDPI for example and in here you can find a whole bunch of icons which as far as I understand because Android is open source uh, I think you can use these in your application as long as you release the um, uh, the uh, Creative Commons share alike license that Android I believe is released under with your application but don't take my word for that please check into this yourself but as far as I know you can basically use these icons now I want to use a couple of these icons here uh, if you look through here I quite like these sort of circular icons in fact there's a whole group of them here somewhere if I can just find them so um, lots of icons to cover virtually every situation here and there's some circular ones there but I think the ones that I want are not these stars uh, well I really can't find them hang on what I'll do is oh here we are yeah we've got them okay so I thought that um, I'd I, I've, I'm kind of formatting here a list of fake email messages and I thought I'd kind of have one icon for if it's if the message has been read supposedly and one icon if it hasn't but for the moment I'll just um, have one icon that will do for both cases so I'm gonna take this icon I think and let's also have the kind of a kind of grayer version of that like this one here and I'm just gonna um, in fact if I right click on this and copy these I think this will work and then I go to Eclipse and now I, I got those from the drawable HDPI folder here so if I click on my drawable HDPI folder here in Eclipse right click now and go to paste and expand that I can paste those icons in and you can also drag them in directly if you arrange your windows appropriately and if you're gonna release your application for multiple screen densities as with images you want to drag in icons for each of the separate possible pixel densities, screen pixel densities that you want to support but just for brevity here I'll just use this HDPI one for the moment 
Now um, I can create a image view in here that will um, do for display my icon. So I'm going to say here image view and let's give it an ID. So I'll say ID, Android ID and I need this at sign plus ID and let's call it list um, something like list message icon. I'm prefixing, I'm trying to prefix everything in this list with list underscore so I can remember that it's a list and then message underscore so I can remember which list it is. And uh, I need to give it um, some dimensions as well. So I'll say layout width and let's make this wrap contents, wrap content and layout height. I'll also make uh, wrap content that will probably work and I'll just format that with control shift F and let's look at this warning here so it's probably the content yeah the content description so let's just give it a um, content description just to shut it up and say in here um, email message like that and I'll just extract this string so I'll just select it and go to right click go to quick fix extract string and I'll get it to put that string in strings.xml like that. So now we've got an ID here and that string is actually in the strings.xml file. Okay, so that uh, looks good. Um, the error hasn't gone away and it's not letting me save it for some reason. Let's just put a blank line in, save all. There we go, that's better. Okay, so um, now I can set the icon on this image view and for the minute, let's just say um, let's just set the source here and if I now use autocomplete and go to drawable because I added that icon to drawable HDPI the, the two icons actually if I use autocomplete again in, in here I can select one of my image uh, an idea that corresponds to one of my images and if I save that and I probably also want here um, I want to say padding I want some padding around my image let's say five device independent pixels just to kind of space things out a bit so that the text on here so the image is going to appear here at the left and I want the text not to be directly next to it but a little distance away from it and now the other thing I need to do here is if I run this now you'll see that I actually set my text views to have a black background but the image is transparent. Those icons actually have a transparent background which you can see if you open them in GIMP, the free photo manipulation tool for example. And uh, I don't want this to show through like the colour of the underlying screen which is probably white. So what I want to do is I'm going to take this background out of the text views and I'm going to paste it into my um, enclosing linear layout up here so I can give the linear layout a black background and then the um, the text view controls most of the controls in Android are transparent and if you don't give them a background usually they'll show through the background behind them so if you set the linear layouts background then hopefully the whole thing will be black as we want and we'll, we'll be in business so I'll save that and I'll click run and actually there's another thing that I forgot which is I probably have to set gravity and I want to set that to, to probably vertical center let's see so center vertical here because what that will do is it will make sure the image is centered vertically rather than having it up near the top of the image item or something so um, I don't know if it's got my um, if it's got my uh, center vertical in or not but it looks good and I think like I maybe I accidentally cut the green text color out of my first text because it's appearing uh, it's appearing a sort of dull gray color but I think that's basically it um, so there's the icon I think it looks quite nice but now um, a further step a further refinement here is we could have a different icon potentially for each item in the list but here I think I want to say that my list items can have one of two different states and I want to have a different icon for each state um, so two different icons depending on the actual email message so let's take a look at an example of that and I'm going to look at my message here my message class which represents 
this holds the data underlying the items in my list and we saw this uh, in a previous tutorial and I'm going to give this a private boolean red which I'll initialize to false so this is to say whether the message has been read or not and I'm just going to right click here somewhere down here and go to source generate getters and setters and tick red click OK so now we've got um, set red and is red um, so if you have a boolean the corresponding getter will be is rather than get so these allow us to get and set the red value and I'll set it yeah, to false by default and let's have another constructor here which will allow me to set whether the message has been read or not so let's say here um, boolean red and then I can say this dot red equals red and now let's take a look at when I create the messages in my main activity here this is a bit of an artificially contrived situation but let's have um, some of them true and some of them false so I'll make this one false and let's make the last one true this is just setting whether these messages have supposedly been read or not now the challenge is now to like uh, give these a different icon depending on whether they've been read or not so in my message adapter here I'm um, going to get the I need to get the image icon um, here I need to get this from the view so that I can change its icon so to do that it's pretty much similar to getting a text view here let's just copy that and I'll say here image view and I need to cast the return value here to an image view and let's call that uh, icon view and let's change this to r.id dot and Eclipse is complaining again but here we go uh, list message icons that's the ID of my um, uh, of my image view in this list here so I'll save that and add the import for image view there control shift O and now let's say here we need to get the appropriate icon for the message so I'll say here boolean um, is red and I'll say equals message dot get red get um, not get red dot is red there we go so I'm getting the red status of that message and now I can create a drawable so I can say drawable icon and let's set that equal to null just for a minute and just add the import for drawable there uh, and a drawable is basically of course a thing that you can draw and in this case it's going to be an icon and now I can say I can use my context which is um, I've got a context here which I passed in in my constructor and the context is, is just a reference to the activity which implements the context interface and I can use that to say context dot get resource resources dot get drawable and I can supply the ID for my icons in here um, now I want to um, do two different things here depending upon the um, whether the message is read or not so let's say if is read in fact yeah I guess what I could do I could say int icon ID and let's choose the icon ID here so I could set it by default to um, and let's say here um, r dot drawable dot um, and I'll set this focused kind of icon that I used that I dragged in by um, I was going to say by mistake I don't know why that I dragged in from the um, Android icon set and then I'll say if is red I'll change that and I'll say icon ID equals r dot drawable dot um, and I'll set this uh, disabled one instead of the focused one which is kind of the grey version of that icon so um, we're using r.drawable instead of r.id because that's how you refer to things in, in these drawable folders and it doesn't matter that um, we've, we haven't got a drawable folder we've just got um, we've just got drawable LDPI, drawable HDPI and so on as long as you've added images to one folder you should have that ID after, as long as you've saved things 
and your program is built successfully, you can reference these from R.Java. And as I say, you probably should drag, drag icons into each of these folders from the separate um, corresponding image folders um, that you're using, or else create different sizes for them yourself and check on the Android developer guide for um, suitable icon sizes if you want. But um, let's just use this one for the moment. And um, so now I can say context.getresources.getdrawable and I can pass the icon ID in. So I'm passing in the icon ID like this one or this one, depending on whether this message is read or not, which I've got from my message. And now finally, so this returns a drawable, and I can say drawable icon equals. And now I, I can get my, I've got my reference to my icon view. And so let's, uh, what's the problem here? Oh yeah, I've already got this drawable icon. Let's delete that one up there because we don't need it. And now I can say icon view dot set. I think it's set uh, image. Yeah, and we've got this view of set image, actually set image drawable, which sets the drawable, and I can pass in the icon there. And finally, now, if I run this with a bit of luck, we will change the icon depending on whether the, me the message has supposedly been read or not. And you can use this, this technique here um, to set icons and all kinds of things, of course. It's not, uh, it's not really restricted to list items. And here we see that the red messages are sort of grey, they have greyish icons, and the unread ones have these um, bright blue icons. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial, and in the next tutorial we're probably going to move on to looking at styling these a bit, because we shouldn't really have the text colours directly hard-coded into the layout. And we also want it so that when, we, when the user touches these list items, they kind of briefly flash a different colour to indicate they've been touched. And we'll look at that um, next time, I should think. So join me again next time, and until then, happy coding.